Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Self Order and Checkout Experiences, a brand new Hyosung interview podcast and under the umbrella of our larger suite of podcast content. I'm your host Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and folks welcome again to the first episode of Self Order and Checkout Experiences. You might be familiar with our other podcasts, uh, Retail Experiences and um, Banking Experiences, where we cover trends, topics, and technologies obviously related to those sectors. But with our brand new podcast, we're going to be speaking all things self-order and checkout, talking the major trends shaping this ecosystem, and of course, the solutions that Hyosung Interview is bringing to the table to help solve the major market, customer, and retailer and brick and mortar needs of today and tomorrow. So again, thanks for joining us. Make sure you're heading to our website, hyosunginterview.com. Again, hyosunginterview.com. Uh, for more information on the products and solutions that we're going to be breaking down today, a little teaser for what we're getting into, um, but also for previous and future episodes of the podcast. You can also find those on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So just uh, hit that subscribe button and you'll get a notification when we drop new episodes or you can peruse our full catalog of previous conversations and make sure you're subscribing to uh, retail experiences and banking experiences as well for all those episodes. All right, team, let's jump in. We have a lot to break down today, and I'm excited to introduce our guests as well, so let's get through this intro. On today's episode of the podcast, we're going to be talking elevating self-order and checkout experiences, and we're going to be chatting the launch, one of the newest divisions and newest product suites at Hyosung Interview. So picture this. You walk into a store, and instead of the usual hustle and bustle of the checkout, you experience a seamless, frictionless, and remarkably efficient self-service journey. This is obviously the now and the standard for most of our experiences in a retail brick and mortar, whether it's a grocery store, a Target, you name it. Right, But there's always room for improvement in any of these ecosystems, especially one that's evolving as quickly as the self-service ecosystem. And that can be the technology itself, or more importantly, the customer journey and experience that's evolving and the technology that supports said experience. And so we're not just talking about the future and the now here, but we're really building it here at Hyosung Interview. So this year, we launched our hospitality and commerce division. And starting this August, Hyosung Interview rolled out its first products under this new division, a game-changing suite of self-order and self-checkout experiences and solutions, the JetCheck series and its supporting software, which we hope are going to turn into the gold standard for self-service retail technology. And so we're going to be breaking that down here on today's episode of the show. We're going to dig into the various products in the JetCheck series to, again, really illuminate how they're meeting the market needs of today and what uh, you know mindset and approach went into developing these products in the first place. We're going to break down what they have to offer and how they do it with their technology approach. Uh, but also we're going to connect the dots between major trends that are shaping self-service needs and technology today and obviously help understand how JetCheck check kiosks are supporting that ecosystem. So whether you're a retailer looking to elevate your customer experience or you're a tech enthusiast and you're eager to learn about the newest elevation of technology in the self-service ecosystem, this is the podcast episode for you. Welcome and let's get started. So I'm pleased to welcome our two guests today who are going to help break down this ecosystem for us. Let's go ahead and introduce them. We have with us here today Michael Graham, SVP and Chief Product Officer, and Kara Myers, VP of New Business Sales, both with Hyosung Interview. Great to have you both on. How are you all doing? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back. Good to be chatting again. Yes. Good, and, to, good to connect. Yeah. yeah. And Kara, this is our first time yes. here. So <laughs> welcome to the studio. And um, again, I'm looking forward to picking both of y'all's brains on this new division, this new product suite, and again, how it's helping elevate that key customer experience that continues to evolve around self-service. So uh, I want to start you know, by painting a wider picture here. I like talking trends. I like getting y'all's thoughts on where the ecosystem's at in general. So give us a pulse check on the self-order and self-checkout, uh, you know, technology, but also experience ecosystem today, right? Where is this industry right now? Where is it growing? How's it evolving? What's shaping it? Give us y'all's perspective. Yeah, great question, Daniel. And again, thank you for having us. Yeah. I, you made this point earlier that self-checkout is somewhat, uh, expected now when you go to a realtor, you're expecting to see it at your hypermarket, at, at your big box store, you're expecting to see it at even your traditional retailer uh, where you're buying your clothes or shoes or not to sell options for self-checkout. So certainly 
from a U.S. market and consumer perspective, there's been great adoption of it. Now, has it necessarily been a pleasant adoption? Probably not in many cases. Uh, <laughs> Definitely it, some friction here. There, there are some generational gaps at times, I think, that happen there. You know, if you talk to my dad about self-checkout, he's like, I skipped that altogether. No. Um, so I, I think from an industry perspective, certainly there's been adoption. In fact, I, uh, recent reports indicated that grocery uh, checkout lanes, 40% are now assisted, I mean, self-service checkout today yeah. versus assisted. Um, and so you're seeing that penetration, but you have many retailers specifically in kind of this lower tier regional family owned businesses that are a little hesitant to take ownership of self-checkout because they're worried about that experienced brand. Right. Um, and I think that's where we come in and, and we have the luxury of being second to the market. We're not first to the market here. Obviously there's one, you know, incumbents that have gone before us, but uh, that gives us some unique opportunity to learn from mistakes of the past and how can we do things better. So, Kara, I don't have anything to add to that from a, from yeah. a market perspective. No, I think that that's perfect. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. You know, generational gap, and we got to try to meet all of those needs so that everybody has a pleasant experience when they are doing the self-order and checkout. Definitely. And, I mean, that's something that's tracked for me as I've spoken to, um, you know, to y'all in the past, um, but also to your colleagues, is that, you know, and it reflects too in quite literally the names of our podcasts, right? Which went from inspired retail to retail experiences, but the experience itself is key and fundamental and has been guiding the development of y'all's product solutions from the very beginning, um, but just continues to come into focus. And I like what you said there, right? Learning from what's already in the market, what's working and what isn't, and the complaints that people hear or that you might hear from customers about the retail experience when it is self-checkout or from retailers themselves, you know, whether it's grocery or banks or whatever, when they complain about this aspect of managing a self-service ecosystem is difficult. I know that that has, um, you know, led the development of a lot of your products in other sectors. So I'm curious to pull from how that, um, you know, is being formulated and executed on in this world of self-order and checkout. Before we get into that, let's get a few more pulse checks. So first I wanna get y'all's thoughts on the customer experience side of things, right? What are you all seeing right now around self-service that is working for the customer experience and stuff that isn't, stuff that needs to be improved upon or, um, you know, is just introducing friction where there doesn't need to be any. What are you yeah, thoughts? Yeah, gr great example. So think about it from a shopping experience and just using grocery stores as an example. A lot of retailers now are focusing on kind of that e-commerce solution and connecting the physical and the digital or what we call fidgetal, uh, which is kind of a 50 cent word to say we've connected these two. <laughs> products together, <laughs> but but the, the reality is is that you can spend all this time as a retailer making sure that whatever I've shopped for online, I'm getting those coupons of the loyalty reward art. You go all through that process of great experience of picking out products in the store and you get to check out and you get to the machine and this is the machine that only accepts cards and you have cash or vice versa. Or three of the machines are down and they're not working and nobody seems to care that there's not enough self-checkout machines. Right. And by that point, because the retailer has implemented self-checkout, they've cut all their staff that would normally staff those assisted lines. So I think there's a lot uh, to be said about making sure that experience is frictionless and seamless as we like to call it in the industry. Yeah. And, and a lot of that has to do with the capability that we have built up over other parts of our industry. You know, we have over 200,000 ATMs in the U.S. today and we have vast experience at monitoring and supporting those products. And so leveraging that experience and taking that to a retailer system, we've managed fleets. We can help you make sure you have optimum uptime so that when right. customers get in line that they're, they're ready to do self-checkout that it's actually seamless and frictionless. Totally. So, Kara, what about from your perspective? Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I was just, I was thinking, you know, it, you don't want to go into a store and you, you get the unidentified item, right? And then that, that light starts Misery. flashing and then you wait forever, right, for yep. someone to come over and help you. And we want to try to alleviate that because for some people, like we talked about, right, they maybe haven't used self-checkout before. Maybe their local store hasn't made that leap, but then all of a sudden they see a machine and either they're excited by it or they shy away from it. Either way, we want their first experience with our machine to be seamless. We want it to be easy and positive so that they walk away and they're excited next time about trying it again rather than being worried and concerned. Totally. And, you know, um, it brings me back to like just literally going to Kroger the other day. You start to see that um, the ecosystem does kind of iterate upon itself, right? Uh, whereas there used to be self-service completely, and then before that, obviously, total service with a staffed uh, cashier. Uh, now we're starting to see like strange hybrid blends mm. where it's self-service and there's a conveyor belt, but there's still someone at the other end helping bag your stuff 
or you know check in on if there's a you know an ID check if you're grabbing a pack of Trulies or something, right? So I, I do like that you bring that up, right? That the ecosystem is constantly evolving. Um, but I'm curious to pull from how you see it evolving on the retailer's side, not just the customer side too, right? Because self-service introduced a lot of operational challenges, efficiencies as well, obviously. Um, but I'm curious what y'all's pulse check is on that, right? what is kind of needed, what is already working well for the brick and mortar, the grocery store, the retailer, the bank, whatever, on these self-order and checkout um, ecosystems? What's working, what isn't, what are you all seeing? Yeah, I think one of the things that I that we see a lot of and we certainly try to encourage our customers to think about is it's not, it doesn't always have to be about eliminating staff. Obviously there's you know labor costs and all those things to factor in, but from a customer experience standpoint, Instead of having all of your upfront personnel be handling an assisted checkout lane, perhaps they can be greeting the customers, asking mm -hmm. them if they've gotten everything they wanted, if there was something they couldn't find. You know, it, it gives you an opportunity, I think, as a retailer to enhance your customer service, not just eliminate costs. And I think we want to try to balance that. I don't know if you would. That's great. No, I, I think that's exactly right. And especially as we talked about, a, a lot of our target market out of the gate is, is addressing we talked about 40% in grocery being self-checkout. So right. there's some point there's a penetration level, maybe it's 50, maybe it's 53% to where they say, okay, we kind of think this is the penetration point. Right. Um, but for the smaller grocers, and they're so much resistant to the idea of how's this going to impact my customer service. In fact, we've had customers tell us, I'm never going to implement self-checkout because my dad owns this company and he hated the fact that we didn't have a face-to-face -face conversation. Right. So there, there is a balance there, though, because could you still have that human interaction that people are sometimes, you know, for example, looking for, uh, but could that be more from a service perspective and not necessarily what's the price on item number, you know, five on aisle three? So I, I definitely think that's an opportunity, as Carrie talked about, is it's not just about cutting costs, it's about basically allocating resources to enhance your customer experiences. Um, even from a retailer perspective, we a lot of times are dealing with the operational side, so they're all about how much are you going to cost, how much you're going to save. Right. But when you talk to the store managers and the regional directors of, of grocers, they're telling you, hey, look, I'm getting measured on my customer experience score. Right. So, you know, we need to figure out a way to make sure and our solutions are focused on driving experiences that enhance customers. They get higher ratings and you have adoption ultimately that drives efficiency. Right. Yeah, because, you know, cutting costs or, you know, increasing costs, if it's a, an investment, that's only one measure. Sometimes it might be difficult to quantify, like, what what is the cost or the benefit of a positive customer experience, right? If you now lose that customer, what's the cost of that in the long term? And so to your point, a, I think that sweet spot is when addressing operational issues are meant to and intrinsically also benefit the customer experience also, right? And so tying those in together rather than treating them as separate goals is I think where Kyosung Interview is really, uh, you know, has found its stride, has built confidence in the market. And so I'm excited to see that applied to this new product suite. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the new product suite. Sure. Again, we're talking about the Jet Check series and its software ecosystem as well. Michael, this one's for you. Can you give our listeners just a brief overview of the inspiration then behind the Jet Check series, right? With all this context now laid out on the market, how did that end up motivating the launch of Jet Check? And how does it align with Hyosung Interview's vision of the now and the future of self-order and checkout ecosystems? Yeah, and I, I, I think the inspiration is truly from a customer perspective and, and uh, quite frankly, we had had similar solutions in Asian markets, for example, so we learned a little bit there, but, but it's obviously a different market in the U.S., and you have a much more, I don't want to say uh, better, but you have a much more customer-centric focus, um, and retailers obviously are very sensitive about what their ratings are from a customer experience. And so as we thought about our solutions, we obviously knew that from a technology perspective where we and we've talked about this before, Daniel, we have kind of this manufacturer's soul. That's kind of how we got built. So we knew we could build, you know, good solutions, aesthetically pleasing solutions. We knew the technology underlying would work well together. We have confidence in that. But it also had to be a solution that was also aesthetically pleasing to customers. So I can't be intimidated when I look at it like, man, what are all these pieces and buttons and things I'm going to push? Because as we've talked about generationally, there are a lot of customers that will say, gosh, I I'm just intimidated. I would rather have somebody else you know, do that for me. So for us, the inspiration came from customer feedback, talking to retailers, looking at other solutions, 
and even just personal family, like, you know, I, I remember talking to my mom about, well, why don't you use self-checkout when I would go to the grocery store with her periodically? She's like, well, that takes too long because she was having to do the scanning. And so how can that process, you know, be an easier process? So for us, the ability from a modular design, uh, a slimmer design, um, uh, less footprint, less intimidating was got a lot of our inspiration in building the Jet Check series. And then Kara, as VP of New Business Sales, uh, I'm curious what the initial response has been from folks, you know, where you have launched the Jet Check series. What has been, you know, I guess the underlying foundation of some of those conversations for why they're interested in the first place? And as it's making its way into the market, how have they responded? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I, I think the key is that it's kind of like Michael talked about, right, is that it's, it's appealing. The way it looks is appealing. Obviously, there's lots of machines out there that are appealing also. But I think it's the ease of use. You know, it, there's less buttons than more buttons, right? I mean, it's kind of simplified. But sure. I think that's what, that's what I've been hearing from the customers is they like it. They like the way it looks. Let's bring it in. Let's check it, test it, see if it works, see what it looks like in our environment. And so far, the response has been, this has been really easy to program. It's been really easy to have it do what I need it to do. And you know, and then we put it in a customer environment and, and is, is that same ease of development translating on the other side for the customer? And right. thus far, that's the feedback that we're getting is that it is. Nice. Exciting stuff yeah, then. Yeah, it really is. Well, then let's break down the product suite with a little more specificity. Um, well, I say that. But we're going to paint another wider picture, and then I'll get even more specific. So okay. we're, we're funneling this down. Um, so again, we have the Jet Check E, the Jet Check X, and the Jet Check C. These are the three core products or hardware solutions within this ecosystem. The Jet Check C is not out yet. Is that correct? That's or, correct. OK, so that one's on the horizon, but we're still going to be talking about that one. Um, again. The Jet Check E, which is the entry level solution of the series, the Jet Check X, which is a full function solution, and as we'll break down the Jet Check C, it's sort of an expanded full solution with some cash recycling capabilities as well, which I'm very excited to break down. So give us an overview here of why the spread, right? Why these different types of options, what needs do they service? Let's go one by one. Let's start with the E um, and we'll go from there. Yeah, great. I, and I think it's great to kind of start with you from that entry level perspective. Um, for us, one, going back to your point of kind of a, at least a complete suite of solutions um, from a hardware perspective is to provide options for those retailers. So maybe I'm not the largest retailer, uh, but I want to be able to uh, figure out a way to do self checkout. So this could be, you know, maybe it's a convenience store, even from a quick serve restaurant or from a grocer. The E is such a versatile solution that it can work in all those different environments. It is a cashless solution, and so it's primarily targeted those, you know, card and cash and mobile shoppers uh, from that perspective. It's a very small and what I would call a sleek format, so it can fit into multiple uses, and it can, you could use it at your dry cleaners as a, a retailer, but it could also find its way, way into your largest grocer as well. So. For the E, it's really the versatility of the, of the solution that, that makes it, um, uh, we think, really attractive to the market and a number of markets, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And I'd agree with that. Yeah, it just I think it's its broad versatility is, is really the selling feature. Yeah. And we had a customer just recently, for example, in, in grocery, and we had a certain mindset of how they were going to use the solution. and. And, uh, but they end up actually using the solution less of a kind of a self checkout and more of a self order where they're placing it as a, you know, a deli kiosk that allow you to order, you know, trays for parties and cakes and whatever. Nice. And, uh, and then they tied it into their loyalty program where somebody can come up and use a thumbprint to identify themselves and get loyalty points. So even beyond what we thought from a versatility, you know, kind of capability solution, they, they've taken it and moving that, that forward, which is great for us. The, oh, yeah. the more options and, and the more they think about it is you know, the versatility of it. Well, it's cool to see your end users kind of start to redefine the purpose of the product because it is so straightforward to implement and use, right? That's, you kind of found the sweet spot there, so that's exciting. Um, can you expand on that a little bit, right? What are some of those needs or use cases that you're hearing from small retailers, small businesses that the E is designed for? Um, how are they wanting to use it? Uh, and how do you imagine they will get the most benefit from implementing the E? Yep. Well, I, 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 we mentioned just the number of industries you're kind of looking. I think right now we've got three different types of kind of markets and customers that have out of yeah. the gate. 
you know, we launched basically in August, so we're, we're really just 30 days into this, and we've got uh, grocery customers looking at it. We've got a uh, quick serve restaurant looking at it. So you, you've been in the, uh, you know, the, the fast food chain, and now you're ordering from a kiosk, and so we've got uh, a fairly large fast food chain that's looking at that solution from a quick serve perspective. And then we've got folks in the gaming and lottery industry looking at the solution uh, you know, and how do they leverage that solution to do cash, I mean, cashless, you know, lottery tickets and purchases and, and those types of things. So that gives you kind of a range of the versatility of it. I think the other thing is, especially if you talk about smaller businesses, the cost. Because um, a lot of times self-checkout, you know, if you think about how much in, in the, today's market, a full self-checkout system with a scanner and scale and all those pieces, that can be an inhibitor to, to, the, to the everyday, you know, I've got 10 locations, you know, franchise owner, if you will. But the Jet Check E really is a pretty, I don't want to say cheap, it's a value priced solution um, that really can help them get into, hey, I can drive what my customer is expecting from a self-checkout, you know, touch experience uh, perspective, but I'm not necessarily going to break the bank doing that. Yeah, and can I add to that too? I think yeah. one of the other pieces of that that makes it kind of interesting is you talk about the versatility. Is it's really lightweight. Like I can yeah. pick it up and unplug it in one place and stick it in another. And I think that's one of the other things a small yeah. retailer they don't want to bring in a, a you know a deployment team to yeah. move a unit necessarily. That's not going to be in their budget. So yeah, the fact that they can the just dolly, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, the fact that they can unplug it and relocate it, maybe based upon different promos that they're running or maybe a different need that they have that month, you know, based upon what time of year it is, it gives them that flexibility. Too. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and to Kara's point, we, we ship a ton of products around the world and ATMs, and ATMs can be a very heavy product because it's got a safe. And so when we were first starting to ship these products out, we were looking at our shipping costs and it's like, why, why are we going to charge so much? And I said, oh, it's uh, 200, 200 pounds per unit. And I said, that thing weighs 30 pounds. Yeah, right. So we had to go back and check the numbers yeah. and you make sure we weren't being overcharged. Easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. Um, and you know, another aspect of the Jet Check uh, E that stands out to me is its design for the customer customer experience. So obviously, uh, it's designed for both card and mobile shoppers uh, and you know allows for the addition of multiple payment options yep. so that the customer can choose what is easiest for me. Right. Can you expand on that a little bit more and why you see this as an important consideration uh, for modern self-order and checkout solutions? Yeah, I, I, I think if you had gone back 10 years from now and said, how much have we moved from Cash is still being used, obviously, in, in certain demographics, and then across the board, cash payments are still needed. But the evolution of where we went to paying with a card and a swipe, and now we've you know quickly evolved. And I think, obviously, the pandemic accelerated the idea of cashless payments. And so, um, and then you get into alternative payments. And so, you know, you've got you know uh, buy now, pay later. You've got all these different scenarios of payment options where. You know, people are paying with different forms of currency and cryptocurrency and those type of things. So, I think we just have to, as a as a provider of these solutions, be open to what the consumer is expecting and wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to leave that option to the retailer to, to be able to, you know, whatever their customers are asking for from a payment. We want to open up that aperture and allow them to do that. Sure. So let's jump over to the Jet Check X now. So this is the full function solution. Um, it's a little bigger, right? It has more uh, hardware features to support a more, uh, I guess, a wider variety of checkout needs. Uh, go ahead and break down the differences between the E and the X product and some of the benefits that stand out to you on that full function and full service solution. Let me say that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Kara <laughs> uh, has been interacting with our X just lately. So again, JetCheck X is really that full function machine that you talked about. X is really that it, 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 uh, it's X cash. So it's, uh, it's all about the, as we just talked about, uh, the options from a payment selection, less cash. Right. Uh, it is a slim, uh, slim sleek uh, uh, unit. Uh, it does have the full scanner and scale that you could add in from a grocery perspective, so I have the ability to weight and measure and do those kind of things uh, for loose produce or other items. Um, it's also got the capability from a security scale perspective. Uh, I need to know if you put something on the, uh, on the bagging cart or not and, and if retailers want to do that. We also have the option of turning that off. You know, 
because uh, I sometimes feel like that's an obnoxious thing, like I didn't put anything on the bagging scale, but maybe my cart bumped it. But uh, we do have that option because certain grocers and retailers will, will want that feature. So, so for us, it's, it's really now we can start to say, hey, we're not just offering this one solution that can be versatile, but now if you need to be able to scan you know, apples or oranges or grab barcodes, whatever, we have that capability from a full function uh, perspective. And so we launched that product here about two weeks ago. And uh, we've already had a couple of customers say, hey, can I get that into my lab and, and start certifying? And so, um, so we're really excited about it. And, and quite frankly, a lot of the feedback has been, hey, that is really a pleasing looking device as we talked about earlier. Yeah. So it's it doesn't look complex. Yeah, it doesn't. It's, it's slim, just like the Jet Tech E. Nice. And despite the fact that it's got the full functionality, it's not this monster of a machine, right? right. So. Yeah, and you, and you can actually, one of the other things we're exploring is the idea of, you talked about belts, right? You can have belts and really expand that, you can expand that solution based upon your needs of your store right. and your customers. Cool. And you mentioned that trend earlier because a lot of stores are playing with the idea, do I go to 100% self-checkout? And so we've seen some of the big box retailers kind of go back and forth on, yeah, right. I'm through it, or you've walked in on a Friday night and you think it's supposed to be busy and it's like, there's, there's nobody here to help me check out, where do right. I go? Um, so we think that trend will continue. I think it's a longer tail for, for the mid-sized retailers and grocers to go down that path of self-checkout. So, but the idea of bringing up what, what we consider the last mile in self-checkout is uh, that full cart experience. So if I've got a full cart and I need that belt with their entry, so we, we have that capability from a solutions perspective to offer the belt options uh, you know, on our self-checkout solutions, including the X and, and eventually the C. Definitely. Well, I like this approach that essentially allows your product suite to evolve with the needs of the market as it pendulum swings back and forth to find that middle ground. Right. Uh, so that modularity is key. That way you're not sort of like setting the trend in the market and saying, okay, we're launching this product and now everyone has to have conveyor belts on their machines because we thought that was the best design choice. You have that option, but also they could go with the slim option or the medium sized option or the one with you know scales or the one without scales. And I think that really allows for the end user, which in this case, you know, not necessarily the customer, the B2B end user, whether that's a small retailer or a you know national chain, can evolve with, grow or shrink that product with their needs. So that's pretty exciting to see. Another aspect of the JetCheck X that stands out to me, which is more of an aesthetic thing, but I think it's just as important to the customer experience, is variable LED lighting, which can help match store brands. So, you know, you'd think that's a small thing, but if your store brand is, you know, green, blue, yellow, and you can have that kiosk light up green, blue, yellow, that goes a really long way to communicate this isn't a third party piece of equipment. It's integrated into the ethos of our brand as a small, you know, business or a, a major retailer. Expand on that a little bit for us and why you added that customization layer to this. And I guess pull back the curtain a little bit on y'all's mindset for implementing a feature like that. Because, you know, it could be seen as just an extra thing, but I, I do think it's fundamental and represents uh, Hyo Sung Interview's larger vision for, you, you know, your product suites and impact on the market, so. Yeah, I think it's a great question. Uh, you know, quite frankly, this is inspired from a little bit of our banking business. One of the things that we learned, for example, adoption of like cash equipment that would be used by a teller was if there was the ability for that teller to personalize that device that they were using, adoption was typically greater. Nice. So for example, we had tellers naming their cash equipment. This is Bob or this is Sandra, whatever. That's cute. But we <laughs> noticed the ones that named their device, typically their adoption was 10 to 15% greater and they were then using it and then the owner of the bank was getting the efficiencies of counting cash faster than hand counting, for example. So the idea behind putting that ability of uh, aesthetic lighting that allow them to match their store brand is it takes a little bit of ownership for them. So now they start to feel that this is part of my ecosystem. Yeah. It's not, oh, that's that so-and-so's machine. It's always giving me problems. You know, it's my machine. Um, and this goes even a step further. I know we're gonna get there eventually, but on the software piece for us, one of the key pieces from a software perspective is we're gonna be able to give retailers, specifically our kind of larger tier one customers, the ability to customize their software solution to meet their logos, their branding. So it's not gonna be stuck looking exactly how Hyosung would design it. If they wanna change the way it looks and feels in the color, great. We wanna give them that capability so that they can take ownership of it. Because at the end of the day, if they don't feel like it's a part of their store, they're certainly not gonna market that to their customers and use this as an extension of, of me as a, as a retailer. Definitely. 
I think too, if I can just add to that, I mean, you know, go back to the whole experience thing, right? If you if you have a favorite retailer that you go into, you go into it for a reason. Either the product that you love the product, maybe it's that the store makes you feel good when you walk in, whatever it is, right? Retail therapy is a very real thing. Oh, I, <laughs> I can attest to it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, you know, rather than having this foreboding piece of machinery, if it's got that same color that is a part of this environment that you for whatever reason like or connect to, I think that that just helps, again, connect that full experience end to end from the minute you walk in the door to yeah. your very last last part of the experience. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I also love the point on naming your machines. I mean, never underestimate the power of uh, you know, making your m machines imprint with a uh, little human quality. Absolutely. That's right. If my ATM can feel like a gonk droid from Star Wars and I'm I'm Absolutely. feeling good about it, you know? <laughs> that's my buddy and he's he's chugging along. He's doing a great job. So, yeah, that's that, that is important. And you know, to your point, Creating that sense of ownership is key because inevitably machines go down or there's some issue or, you know, maybe they're having to deal with a customer complaint about the machine. The last thing you want is for the retailers you're working with to then put all the blame on the product itself. If you design the product to really operate as and be as seamlessly an extension of their operations, then getting that you know, operational is seen as a benefit to them, not as now a hindrance to, That's well, right. God, our customers want this mobile thing, and now I have this mobile machine I gotta fix. Exactly. Hey, the power of a colored LED light, you know, it can go a long way. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's cool. So, last but not least, I wanna hit on the JetCheck C. So this is not uh, launched yet. It's coming out in 2024, is yeah. that correct? Should be Q1, we'll have Q1. it launched. Q1, okay. Yep. So, Mark your calendars, the Jet Check C is on the way. So this is another full function solution. It's a bit further expanded, but the thing that really stands out to me is its cash recycling capabilities, right? Um, it's cash SCO solution. Can you expand on that for us? Um, I, you know, folks may not totally know what cash recycling is, so maybe a quick clarifier on that too for folks that haven't checked out um, retail experiences or banking experiences, where we cover it in depth, so make sure you're checking out our podcast, <laughs> right. folks. Um, but yeah, break that down for us. Why is cash recycling an important component, enough of an important component to launch an entire new product with just that baked in? Yeah, I think, and probably more uh, appropriate now than ever, because you, you know we're all familiar with what's happening from an interest rate, from a Fed perspective. So retailers that are carrying a lot of cash in their store are paying for that cash. Mm -hmm. You know, Prime Plus, uh, I think it's one or 2% at this point. So you're paying for that cash as a retailer. So the more that you can get that cash to basically to be reduced, the amount of cash you're carrying in your store, but also get the operational credit for that cash going into the bank, that's really what cash recycling is about for these retailers. So while it doesn't necessarily always seem like a benefit to the consumer in a roundabout way, it is because they're paying less as a retailer for cash. Subsequently, they're able to pass those savings on, for example, in products and, and other solutions that they're delivering. Um, quite frankly, Hyosung really is uh, a leader in the cash recycling space. In fact, we were the first, you know, large, uh, you know, manufacturer of, of ATM and, and cash equipment to bring recycling to the U.S. And so we have uh, a long tenure of developing this technology. And I'm, I'm bragging a little bit, obviously, Daniel, because this really is the strength of us as the companies you talked about in our other podcast. Yeah. So now you're taking that experience and, and expertise that we've built up in the banking and the retail space and you're bringing that over to the self-checkout space. And yes, there are other solutions out there, and we have competition that has been in this market a little bit as well, but um, we think we have a real competitive advantage here, um, not just from a technology perspective and handling the recycling process and being efficient and reducing jams and those things, but behind the thought process of cash management. So not just we can help you with the cash that you're recycling from your consumer, but we can also help support the cash in the back office. And so uh, that's where we think of a competitive advantage. And, and JetCheck C will bring that competitive advantage to the market uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, give us some more thoughts on that. I'd love to hear from both of you all on, um, on those differentiators, right? Because you brought it up yourself. You're not, you know, the first entrance in this market, um, but you do have a lot of legacy to pull from operating around the mission of self-service just for other needs in other industries. So maybe get more granular on what sure. are some of those specific um, bits of experience, whether it's uh, you know technology or just sort of visionary approach that you think really helps give the JetCheck series 
a differentiator because of that experience in other industries. One of the things I would add for us is, is a lot of times people think, well, I've, I've you'll hear, say, I, I have all this capacity. We'll hear our, our competition say, hey, I've got more capacity. You know, recycling is not about capacity. It's not about filling your sheen to the max capacity. It's about understanding how much cash is coming into your store on a daily basis. And retailers are great. They know how much is coming in. They know what's going on. It's also understanding how much cash is going out of your store on a daily basis. Um, and as you know, when you check out today and you have the option of taking $20 extra out here. And so understanding that balance of cash that's coming in at that ecosystem and then what cash is being used in the back office and, and especially for smaller retailers that may be using that cash to pay for vending services. You know, they may be using that cash to support, you know, paying the guy that brings the Pepsis to stock the back of their, their office there. So um, understanding that complete ecosystem is a lot of experience of what we've had in the past and what we do and we're, we're building on that legacy. And so that's some of the details. So our incumbents may say, I have the largest capacity. Yeah, we can match your capacity, but it's not about filling your machine. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would say from a detail perspective is a lot of our uh, competition has gone out and they are sourcing the cash recycling component from somebody else. So they've decided, hey, we're not great at it, so I'm gonna buy this product from somebody else from a cash or coin recycling perspective. The difference is, is we manufacture that. So we control the supply chain. We're not dealing with backlogs and, hey, I can't get that product for 19 months. Uh, we control that supply chain and we control the changes. So if our retailers say, hey, I really would like to be able to load this much cash at this much time when I need to add cash versus having to open the whole safe, and we have that capability. So we're able to make those changes ourselves. Nice. So, sorry, Carrie, yeah. you need to dominate on that. No, 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 I appreciate it. You're definitely the expert on that. So no, I appreciate it. I, I think I just was gonna add it, you know, again, try, I keep trying everything back to that experience, no, but do. I think it's it's as much, you want the, you know, you want the customer to be able to take the cash out. You also, at the end of the day, need the store personnel to be able to accurately account for the cash that they've taken in right. during the day. And I know in one of our recent conversations with a customer, they had a specific machine that was a self-checkout machine that's been on the market for a while. And um, they would have to have their machine count down to give them their final numbers a, a minimum of four times every day. And so that's not very efficient from a store management perspective, right? And I mean, if I was the manager, I would think, well, there's some risk in that. How do I know that the fourth time was the right time, right? right. So I think there's a, an element yeah. of, you know, being available for the customer, but then also making your store run more smoothly and making, I mean, that, that speaks to job satisfaction for a, an employee as well. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Now there's one more layer here I want to unpack before we start to wrap up the um, conversation, but that's the software platform and yes. ecosystem that supports the hardware. So uh, in this new division of Hyosung Interview, and uh, as part of this larger product suite, you also have the Blueverse. B-L-U-E, Verse, software platform. Uh, so this allows for connection between retailers, dealers, and operations uh, to the front end. This helps improve service, uh, service monitoring, support, predictive analytics, repair dispatch ticketing, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of a high level overview. Uh, can y'all dig a little deeper for our audience here, right? What role does this Blueverse software play in supporting the goals of delivering a quality self-order and checkout experience? for both retailers and customers. Yeah, one of the things we realize is, especially as a manufacturer, we can be really good at building a box and we can also be equally good at building- A pretty box. Yeah, hey. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we also recognize that it needs to be a complete suite of solutions. It can't just be about, hey, we've got a piece of hardware, stick it in and go run. Yeah. Um, and so there's kind of two approaches there from a software perspective. We are building a complete suite of self-checkout software uh, if you will. Uh, that takes time. And, and uh, I would say it takes time, but it's also going to take less time than it take our predecessors. Because if they could stop today, if you talk to some of our competition and say, hey, we want to build our self-checkout solution, they didn't have the luxury of some of the capabilities from a web or a mobile design perspective that are apparent today. So that helps us accelerate our time to, to, to market, uh, probably cutting it in half by a couple of years. So we think by the time we get into late 2024, we'll have a more of a complete software solution. We'll offer self-checkout applications that customers will use. And we're actually in that development right now and it's going very well. The other piece that we have of that solution is kind of that monitoring piece of that, that fleet management that you mentioned. So we have that capability today on the ATM and the cash equipment side for, for banking and retail. So now what we're doing is taking that and tweaking it to support the, the self-checkout solutions. So the good news there is we have a very mature, proven solution out in the wild today with really some, some minor tweaks and listening to the market about what, what they want and what our customers want. 
uh, we'll be launching that solution very early in, in 2024. So to your point, that gives you the ability as a retailer, I can watch what's going on in my solutions. Yes, I can look at analytics about what's going on with the cash and how many transactions, but also be able to monitor the experience perspective and how am I doing on loss or fraud and those types of things. So um, we'll give those tools pretty quickly. And we've heard from our customers that there's some gaps in that in those solutions today from a from monitoring perspective. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's one piece. The, the last thing I would say is, I mentioned this very early on, is our ability to customize those solutions and hand customization over to the retailer. We don't want to prove to know that we know everything about this market because that grocer, that retailer knows their customer. So if they know based on you know, certain features or certain products or certain days of the week they do better at selling, let's let them customize and drive that. So we want to hand those keys over and we think we'll get greater adoption on that. So Kara's background, for example, came from dealing with a lot of partners and that's where our feedback. So I don't know if you add to that, but that's, that's an opportunity for us as well. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. I, I kind of grew up, if you will, in the, in the channel industry, always working with dealers and partners. And, cool. you know, I think oftentimes um, their feedback is missed sometimes, you know, but they, they deal with the customers every day. I mean, they're, they're right there alongside them. And so being able to have them play a part in how we build this business and what we do is just, it's it's pivotal in my opinion and we want you know we want partners who are willing to partner with us we don't want to just dictate to them what we want what we want them to do and and many of our partners have this capability that michael's talking about as well right they can help with that development and and things like that so i think our partners are going to be key and that's definitely a huge part of my background is working yeah. with our dealers and partners yeah and i think the feedback they give us on the, the software solution piece is going to be key mm -hmm. um, you've obviously daniel heard of ai uh, these days we also have a term we call ei uh, and for us, that's ease of integration. Um, so while we're offering software solutions, and until we have a full suite of software solutions later in 24, we also recognize that, that consumers are asking for our products and solutions. So if they have an existing software solution from a point of sale, um, we're making it very flexible to say, hey, we can integrate with that. In fact, we had a customer kind of challenge us and say, hey, if you can get your product into my lab and turn around, I'll put it in my store. And Basically, in a matter of about three days, we'd integrated with their solution. So I call it EI, ease of integration for us. And, uh, and we've proven that in the market, and we'll continue to prove that as, as kind of a game changer for us. Well, and I, you know, I think in this era of big data, uh, I mean, you really, you can't have too much data. I mean, maybe you can. It's, it can get a little <laughs> much. But you're like, yes, you can. <laughs> but um, that, that level of oversight is key for making informed decisions about how to improve, again, the experience for customers, right? So it's exciting to hear too that that consideration went into this new launch and that it's a key part of the launch to integrate these machines into um, you know, retailers experience ecosystem and be able to have the oversight on how is this being used? Are there potential issues? You know, catching downtime when there is, but more importantly, being able to make positive proactive decision making around the data that you get back from it. So always key. And to wrap up the conversation, and thank you both so much for your time so far, uh, you know, for any retailers out there, any brick and mortars, small businesses, who are maybe still on the fence about integrating self-service solutions. Maybe they have that legacy background where, you know, grandpa didn't ever want this business to lose its human touch. Or there's an operational question around, even if we cut employees, I don't know that we can keep up with the equipment or make it work. For anyone who maybe has their doubts, what would you say to them about the uh, Jet Check series and how it can alleviate those doubts and concerns? And if anything, make self-service expand the positive customer experience that they want to maintain. Yeah, I think, um, I, I guess what I would say is, you know, we either through our own efforts or through our dealer's efforts, um, you know, we want to make these products whatever our customers want them to be right. and so i think that that's the message that i would leave is just if you're on the fence and, and you're worried about customer service talk to us about that we can find a way to integrate our products into your environment as a customer right that will allow you to maintain the customer service that you need maybe it looks a little different than it did 20 years ago or 50 years ago but that doesn't mean it's any less valuable right our our ability to connect with people has changed drastically today versus what it was when my my parents were, you know, working. And so I think just give us a chance and, and let us um, 
try to help create that solution that works for you using these foundational products that we have that are that that give us the freedom to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would echo that. I, I think, you know, um, we may be new to this space and self order and checkout experiences. We're not new to the US market from a self service perspective. And we're building a team of seasoned uh, experts such as Kara uh, and others that that know the industry, know the partners, and we're leveraging kind of the strengths we've built in self-service. But to Kara's point, we're malleable at this point. We are new. We're listening to the market. We're paying attention to what customers are telling us. So if we're coming out of the gate with something, and customers are like, "Hey, you know, this really just is not fit from from our model perspective," we have the ability, at least at this point. It doesn't mean that we can't change down the road. That's kind of what we've we've been historically. We have been a disruptor in this market. So. I would ask these these um, uh, retailers, for example, that are that are on the fence and considering self checkout, is if you mention the name Heosync Interview to their current incumbents, look and see what the response is. There'll yeah. be some some concern and fear there because they know, based on who we are, that we are a disruptor and a game changer in the industry, and we typically will listen and build what the customer needs. Well, that means the future is bright for sure, and we know the Jet Check C is al already on the horizon. So there's something to look forward to there with a brand new solution. And I know I'll be watching attentively to see how this new division for Hyosung Interview continues to leave its mark and innovate and start to you know guide the market forward on the solutions and the experiences that are going to be key to support self-service. So. Thank you again to the two of you. I think that does it for our podcast today. It's really been a pleasure picking your brains on this. Again, folks, we've been chatting with Michael Graham, SVP and Chief Product Officer at Hyosung Interview, and Kara Myers, VP of New Business Sales at Hyosung Interview. Welcome to the first episode, and thank you. You did a great job, great learning from you today. Michael, always great to have you around. Yes. So thank you for your always perspectives. Always good, Daniel. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, it. absolutely. And last but not least, if folks want to learn a little bit more about the Jet Check series, the product suite, um, you know, Blueverse, whatever it might be, how can they get in touch? Where can we point them to learn more? Yeah, always heosunginterview.com is a great place to start. But uh, to your point, we've got other avenues from a social media perspective. But uh, starting a website, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get in touch with you. Thank you again, Michael Carrot. Great to chat, and I'm sure we'll be chatting again soon. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And thank you everyone for tuning into this very first episode of Self Order and Checkout Experiences, a Hyosung Interview podcast. If you like what you heard and saw today, make sure that you're subscribing to all of our podcasts, including retail experiences and banking experiences. You can find those by looking up Hyosung Interview on your favorite podcast streaming platform, and you'll find a full catalog of our previous conversations. But make sure you're subscribing to this podcast for all the great trends, technology, and important topics we're going to be breaking down on the self-service ecosystem. And make sure you're heading to our website, hyosunginterview.com. Again, hyosunginterview.com for more information on all the products we just broke down and, of course, for more content and resources from us at the Hyosung Interview team. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Self-Order and Checkout Experiences.